Welcome to today's video about how to create a time series. I think your book does a pretty good job of walking you through the steps, but for those of you that prefer the video um, way, here we go. Um, note that this data file is already loaded into Blackboard, so you can download it and follow along as you go. One thing to note about it, well, two things to note about a time series. The first is that the um, horizontal axis, or the first column, or the first row of data, must be something with a time component. In this case, it's a year. It could be um, seasons of the year, it could be days of the month, it could be months, but it must be something that has a time component. Also, for when you go to create a time series, make sure that this time component is in chronological order, with the oldest at the top and the newest at the bottom. Um, that needs to be done when you type it in. But otherwise, typing it in is very straightforward. Then to create the time series, highlight the two columns of data, and for all of your graphs, you always go to Insert tab. Yours may look a little bit different than mine, but you should have um, one that is um, got a, a set of axes and got a little dots on them. And that's the one that says Insert Scatter or Bubble Chart. That's what we want. And you want to select the one that's got the dots and the lines, not the dots and the curve, not just the dots, but the dots and the lines. So when we select that, we've basically created our time series. You know, we're missing labeling the axes, um, but we've done the bulk of the work. So to get the axes labeled in, we'll go to Quick Layout, as we so often do, and you'll select Layout 1. And notice it puts in the places for the axes. It also automatically puts in, um, in this case, a color-coded um, legend, which we don't need because we're only doing one time series, so you can delete that if you want to make it look a little cleaner. Um, the bottom, you might say year or month or day. In this case, um, I'm going to put this is from season ending in this year. So, for example, this um, 757 three-point attempts is from the 2001 to 2002 basketball season. Um, but I just cleaned it up by only putting the ending year. So we're just telling telling the reader that this is the ending year. This is the number of three-point attempts. So label the vertical axis something appropriate. Um, and then always put some kind of meaningful title on your graph. In this case, this is Duke. These were all um, from Duke. So this was Duke's three-point attempts. So that is creating a time series, which from a technological perspective is the hardest part. Now the other thing that you have to do that some of you will find easier and some of you will find harder is interpreting a time series. In this case, I don't, and I just picked this random example of Duke's three-point attempts um, just randomly, but I don't think there's much to be learned. Now, sometimes time series show that you go progressively up, in which case I might say, you know, Duke tends to be shooting more three-point attempts every year, or maybe they're going down, so they're tend to producing down, and I apologize for the dog noise. Um, but in this case, they all appear to be pretty much around the same mark, I might say that they're going a little bit up in general, but, you know, uh, if you said that they were staying the same, I wouldn't argue with you either. But again, the, the ones that you're asked about on like a test or something like that, they will be an obvious answer of they're staying the same or they are going down or going up. So um, if you have any questions, as always, please email your instructor. Thank you.